Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Now we're getting into the great. We're getting into the second advent. And it amazes me that people say, I love the book of Revelation. Or they'll say, I like Revelations. And that's not the title of the book, Revelation. But I don't like the Old Testament. Without the Old Testament, you wouldn't even have the new. And I, I told that to a guy one time. And he's like, I said, when Paul quoted, where do you think he was quoting for? Hebrews quotes much from the Old Testament. Therefore, wait, I don't like that word. You know, Approximately from the dawn of man sinning against God in the Garden of Eden, where God told Eve in Genesis 3.16, the first prophecy about the Messiah, it's been about 6,000 years. They got this new telescope in outer space out there, I, I forget the name. And Hubble, I... I I, I always pay attention to Hubble. Now what they're trying to do is they're trying to prove there's no God in evolution and we're looking for alien. We're, we're, we're looking for Marvin the March and the wave high and take his little gun and shoot. But I look at those pictures and this one's supposed to be even further. That's the hand of God out there. You realize places where man would not be able to see without these telescopes and the fascination God has with color. Have you read about the description of Lucifer before he fell in Ezekiel 28? Can you imagine the brilliance of color he is? And I'm getting that to say this. In God's timing, and I'm waiting for a prayer request, I'm hoping my pastor's message last night about season. I'm hoping I'm in the winter and the spring is coming. Time of life and love. I hope. But we got to wait. I don't like waiting. If you want to test my patience, you come down here to Daytona Beach, book me in a car, and I can't drive no more. But And when we go... On a two mile ride, and we hit every single red light. I, and I always say it no wonder they run the red lights. I give them an excuse. Say it the Lord, and that's Jehovah. Unto the day that I rise up to the pray. Do you recognize that word pray? Do you know what Revelation Revelation calls Jesus? The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lions go after a prey. And the prey will be the goats. The nation. For my determination is to gather the nations. We read about this before. The United Nations. The United Nations is a prophecy found in a few places in the Bible. They even have the nerve to put a verse on their wall of their building out of context because they have not put away their swords. They have not put away their plowshares. I don't know how many wars there have been since the League of Nations begun. I may assemble the kingdom. So it's called the United Nations Assembly. King James 1611 Bible, don't even bother look at the other modern Bible. Matter of fact, let's try it. Bible. Gateway. This one I want to know. I had an argument today with a pastor about the modern Bible. Zephaniah 3, 
Right. Let's just see here if I can. We want all the English translations. We want every face out of the way. Okay, assemble. Assemble. I don't know what the amplified Bible says. Assemble. I have to look for it. Assemble. Oh, so far, they're pretty good. ESB. Assemble. Alright, so they're pretty good on this one. Mm hmm. Oh, never mind the Living Bible. New International Version Assemble Kingdom. Right, New King James, and we're done. Assemble. Alright, I'll give them that much credit. That won't give them much. To pour. To pour. You know, you, you, you take a bucket, a, a pitcher, and you dump it. Take that cup we've been talking about. Dump it over. Upon them, my indignation, even all my fierce anger. When Jesus Christ comes back as the lion, lion of the tribe of Judah, he ain't coming back friendly, he ain't coming back as the land. He ain't coming back to Tootie Woody Doogie and a little baby in the manger. He comes back with a sword in his mouth, his eyes are red, and his horse is stamping on his enemies. I don't see it. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Now, don't get the earth is going to be devoured by the fire. What Peter talks about. The fire of my jealousy is a fire that's coming out of Jesus. After the millennium, the earth is burnt up with the fervent heat. You know why? I read this the other day with NASA. I know why the heavens and the earth are going to, because of the curse and all that. But they found, they, they, for the last couple of weeks, they found this, they call it a spaghetti on Mars. And as you've seen pictures, it's a little spaghetti map. Well, we don't know what it is. What's this weird spaghetti thing? And they're saying now they know what it is. And I don't know if it came from Rover or our other space vehicle. But they said it's actually a heat shield. Or the protection thereof. Do you realize man has polluted the moon? Man has polluted Mars? Man has polluted the, pre <laughs> the planets. Man has polluted outer space. That's why God's got to have the fervent elements. Everything that man put out there, God says, get rid of it. Burn it up. He says, I'll make all things new. How come I'm going down the highway to sign uh, $500 for littering? Why don't we find NASA for all their littering? For them, will I turn to the people a pure language? Are we going to go back to pre Babel? That we will possibly have one language. It'll probably be, if that's the case, it'll probably be Hebrew, because I believe it was Paul or Hebrew writes, there's a language in heaven that's Hebrew. That they may call upon the name of the Lord. That's the millennium. Your typical... American in the English and Spanish. And the wide language is spoke in America today. They call on the name of the Lord, but it's not for glory. To serve Him with one consent. 
We will be in a millennium. We will be in unity of serving God, Jesus Christ. There will be no rebellion. There will be no civil wars, no battles, no rumors of war. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplements, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring my offerings. That's all in the law. In that day, pay attention to that, shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doing. Everything you do is going to be right in the millennium. If not, well, there's the lake of fire right there. There's all these angels. There, there's the 12 apostles of the Lamb. There's these Christian, the bride of Jesus, given ruler and authorship in cities. There's a sin offering brought. Probably won't have the Baal worship. Wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. There's no pride. Pride goes out the window. Well, there goes America. There goes the English stiff upper lip, old cat, my boy. I mean... <laughs> World War One, Germany's all surrounded, they're bombing this and crazy, and London's all on fire. And you want to spot the tea and eat, drink, and be merry, my friend. Germany was in pride. Thou shalt no more be haunted. Pride lifted up because of my holy mountain. The Jews had. Hey, we're the Jews. We're the Hebrews. We're the children of God. And you realize how haunting were they? God showed up in the flesh. They had envy and they had him crucified. And when he's on the cross dying, oh, he said he's the son of God. Watch, watch God come down and get him. Come on, you can destroy the temple in three days and raise it up. Come on, Jesus. You know how rude they were? Every time you find the Pharisees or the Sadducees coming in and they're questioning Jesus, Jesus is doing something important. Check it out. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. That's in the millennium. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. Part of the law is you can't go for the Jew and clean out every single grave. You got to leave for Ruth. For the beggars, for the poor, to go in there and glean what has already been gleaned. The remnant of Israel, pay, always pay attention to that remnant and Israel because that's people who are left over. David, David, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Israel. As soon as I said David, my no one I couldn't think of Shadrach. They were a remnant. Ezekiel was a part of a remnant. Shall do no iniquity. How's that? 
They are marching in Jerusalem today in gay pride of February. I think it was February. They're not going to do that in the millennium. Nor speak lies. Friend, we all lie. If you say you don't lie, you just lie. You call out sick and you're not sick, you lie. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. And you've always found that the lion shall lay down with the lamb. They're going to have massive crop growth. Tomatoes beyond all tomatoes. If I'm willing and able, I please the Lord to get at least one city. It will be the city where tomatoes are. I'll be right in the middle of the tomato patch. The salt and pepper and Italian dressing, if there is Italian dressing. Sing. That's a that's a a verb of the millennium. And you sure are not going to sing contemporary Christian music. You're not going to be rapping. You sure ain't going to hear country music. You know what's funny with country music? Today we got these self-driving cars and trucks. The old country music I used to hear about when I grew up was, you know, my wife ran away with the pickup truck and, and the boyfriend and the dog is left behind. Well, the new country song is going to be my pickup truck left behind. Man, I come home yet. The Lord has taken away thy judgments. There's no need to judge if they're not sinning. As it says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. That's Jerusalem in the millennium. O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. His great rejoicing, the Lord has taken away thy judgment. No drought, no floods. He has cast out thy enemy, the goats. They've been trampled and they're in hell. Now, watch this one, Mr. Jehovah Witness. Now, before I read the next part, what did Pilate put above Jesus' name? Jesus, the King of the Jews. This is Jesus of Nazareth. Put it more who he, Jesus. Because there was a Jesus in the book of Acts. The King of the Jews. The King of Israel. That's Jesus. In the millennium. He's coming back, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Scripture with Scripture. Revelation 19. Even the Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital L. Jesus is Jehovah. Countless places, especially in Isaiah. You know, it amazes me that there are people in leadership of churches and religions today, the truth is out there, but they don't want to believe it. And their main cause is, well, this is what I believe. And that's okay. In the midst of thee, that's where he's going to be, in Jerusalem, in the midst of all the Israel. Jerusalem Mount Zion is in the center. Remember David? 
Besides getting up and he sees the woman washing her towel, we keep talking about that. What about the time when, Je when Jesus, when David said, I see the tabernacle and curtains. Here I am in cedar. David's window opened up and he saw the tabernacle. Is it a midst of thee there shall not see evil any more? In that day, pay attention to that, it shall be said in Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. What's that? Bring the offerings like you're supposed to bring. Can you imagine with what we've read about the growth of the fruits and vegetables and the tithing that the law says to do? Can you imagine how much they're going to be bringing to the priest in Jerusalem? You say, well, how much are they going to bring? I know how much with the scriptures. I forget the guy's name. He says, Moses? Yes? You got to tell Israel, don't bring any more. What? We got too much. Remember Hezekiah? I think it's Hezekiah. What are all these heaps? These are all the offerings the children of Israel and Judah have been bringing. Well, we got to build some facilities for all that. You see, we've got examples in the Bible of what's going to happen. Today, I did a lesson, how is a man to love his wife? We've got examples. If you go through 66 books of the Bible, and you can't find at least one sin you are involved in, you haven't opened your eyeballs. If you go through the Old Testament, I didn't see nothing. Friend, you're reading the Bible with, with no prayer, no spirit. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Oh, yes, he is. He will save. Jehovah save. That's what Jesus means. Gabriel told Mary, you shall call him Jesus, for he shall save his people of their sins. Again, Mr. Jehovah Witness, that's Jesus is Jehovah. He will rejoice over thee. With you. Can you imagine Jesus being pleased? Now let me ask you a question. How many of you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? And at least two chapters, one and two of Acts. Okay? Here's my question. Ready? When did you ever read that Jesus was clean? I'm waiting. He finishes supper and he goes out singing, but well, he's going to go die. He knows ten of the apostles or disciples are going to take off and wherever they go, who knows? He knows one of them's already sold them out. He's going to go commit suicide. He knows one of them is going to deny him three times and take off. He knows one is going to be by the cross. The only thing I don't know that that Jesus knew or not on the road to Calvary is before it happened did he know what pain was God never experienced pain and let me use the expression and forgive me if I'm wrong when they beat the crap out of Jesus listen John 11 35 Jesus wept that's the first time God ever cried. And it was at a funeral. From the night that he is arrested and taken to the kangaroo court of the Sanhedrin, he is beaten. He, his beard is full. 
I don't know if he's ever felt pain. I don't know if he ever felt pain in his life of 33 years. I don't know if he stubbed his toe. I don't know if he ever got a headache. With the four fishermen, I'm <laughs> I mean, John says there are more to the life of Jesus than Rick. You need to imagine Peter and them picking on poor Matthew all the time. But that's like. I can't imagine the baby Jesus God going poop. But, in all points, he suffers. He will rest in his love. For God so loved the world that he gave. Who did he give? He gave Jesus. He will joy over thee with singing. Jesus is going to sing. I mean, come on now. Jesus. I mean, can you picture Jesus, blessed Redeemer, I live. I mean, can you imagine Jesus singing to me, amazing grace that saved a wrench like you. Have you been washed in my blood? <laughs> take all the hints we know and have Jesus take the pronouns that they don't want to use today and personally apply them to him. Well, there's a hint that we sing and we sang it in church last night. I changed the pronouns. And when I look upon your face, I can't think of this now. I make it personal. When I sing that song, the pronouns I change is it's me and Jesus together. I don't know if I'm wrong, but I forget what the hymn is. I will gather them that are sorrowful from the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom reproach of it was a burden. He's the shepherd, they are the sheep. Come on, sheep. And he's going to come. They're going to come. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflicted. Going to remove the affliction. So up here, Verse 12, I will also leave in the midst of the afflicted and the poor people. When he's in the rain, he's going to remove it. Like the healing he done when he was in the land. I will save her that halted, that limps. There's going to be a healing in the millennium. The pages of the Gospels are going to come alive. And there will be no Sadducees, no Pharisees, no atheists to challenge what he does and what he says. Ten lepers, and I'm just using it as an illustration. All ten of them are going to turn around and praise Jesus. Not the one. And gather her that is driven out. That one sheep we talk about. That lost coin. The prodigal son. I will get yeah, I will get them praise and fame. There's fame. You want fame, don't get it from the world, wait for Jesus. In every land where they have been put to shame. Germany, Russia, Ukraine. 
teach it. At that time will I bring you again. Like he did out of Egypt. With Moses and Joshua. Even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name. And a praise among all the people of the earth. That's not today. When I turn back your captivity, and sure not Babylonian, all the people that were going to praise you, what about when Ezra and Nehemiah came back, Stan Ballot? He wasn't praising them. He kept running off to the king, and he actually got the work to stop for a while. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, when Jesus comes back. Who is Jesus? Saith the Lord Jehovah. And we close another Old Testament book that's probably not opened by your Baptist. What gems have been missed 